and welcome back to the Raven's Table. Today, we're going to talk about a game from the late medieval era called Fox and Geese. Fox and Geese is a two-player board game originating in Europe that dates back to at least the 15th century, and possibly even earlier. It was enjoyed by all levels of society, from the common folk all the way up to royalty. The game is still played in the modern age, with commercially produced boards still being available even today. But before we get into how to play Fox and Geese, let's talk history. So as I said before, the game Fox and Geese dates back to at least the 15th century. The earliest confirmed record we have is from the accounts of the English King Edward IV, who reigned from 1461 to 1483. These records mention the purchase of two foxes and 26 geese all made of silver, thereby having enough game pieces for at least two boards. While we can confirm Fox and Geese was played in the 15th century, there are those who say that the game is a variant from an earlier Icelandic game called Halatafl because of a reference in the saga of Grettir the Strong. If this is indeed true, it would mean that the game can be traced back to about the 1300s. There's even been a proposed link between fox and geese and a 10th century Arabic game called al Quirque, which is a game I have on my list to cover in a future video. Archaeologists have found game boards scratched into the flagstones of a well at Norwich Castle in eastern England, on a wooden bench of Gloucester Cathedral, and even all the way out in Rome in the cloister of the Basilica of St. Paul outside the walls. The Oxford English Dictionary cites a 1633 reference to the game from a play called Fine Companion by the early 17th century dramatist Shackerley Marmignon, where he writes, Let him sit in the shop, and let him play at fox and geese with the foreman. Fox and geese was also played in the Americas, with this board, currently on display at the National Museum of American History, having been created sometime around 1883. It was even said that fox and geese was one of the favorite games of Queen Victoria and Prince Albert. And as I mentioned before, you can still find boards being produced commercially even today, with this one having been produced in Scandinavia. So now, let's have some fun and learn how to play fox and geese. Okay, so before we get into how to play fox and geese, I'll start off with my usual disclaimer. As is the case with many things medieval or ancient, game rules aren't always set in stone. While the rules for Fox and Geese are perhaps a little bit more standardized than games like Roll Game of Ur, it's still important that you agree with your opponent ahead of time under which rules you'll be playing. The version I'm going to show you here today is one of the more standard rule sets, but I do encourage you to try other variations you may encounter. It's one of the things about historical gaming that is uh, fun for me is I like how you can have the rules change and it can change the way that the game is played a little or a lot. Uh, never, never boring for sure. So the game of Fox and Geese is played on this cross-shaped board consisting of 33 individual intersections. Um, the two sides are marked by different colored game pieces here. You've got this single red piece here and these 13 green pieces over here. And uh, so in this case, you've got one red fox and 13 green geese. Uh, obviously, this game is one of inequality. It, it, unlike most modern games like chess or something like that, where both sides are exactly the same, this one's quite different. I mean, one against 13, that's, that's pretty, uh, pretty lopsided. Um, so when you set up, uh, this board is set up to have 13 geese all along these, these uh, black intersections here. And then, as you may have guessed from the markings, the fox goes right there in the center. So this is the way that we're going to set up the game. To determine who gets to play the fox and who plays the geese, uh, you can flip a coin, roll a die, or any way you want. Um, or you can just, just, somebody wants to pick one side or the other. So the objective here, so the two sides have different objectives. The objective of the geese, the green pieces, is to completely surround the fox such that they can't move any longer. So completely surrounding it and the fox's traps. And basically it is said that the geese will then peck the, the fox to death. Um, however, the objective of the fox is to eat as many geese as possible to the point that they can no longer capture the fox. So um, how does that happen? Well, surrounding the fox would be pretty easy. You just surround it on all sides so it can't move. Um, for the fox, you, you capture and you eat geese by just jumping over them like you would in checkers like that. So in this case, if this was the, this was the, the move, so you'd go hop and this, this goose is removed, removed from the board and, and it's gone. So the absolute minimum number of pieces it takes to entrap a fox is four. Um, and that'd be something, a situation kind of like this. 
because as you can see right now, the fox can't jump because that one's blocked and can't jump around a corner because jumping has to be in a straight line. So in this case, those four geese have captured that, have, have uh, surrounded that fox, and in this scenario, the geese would have won. So, uh, to start the game, we're going to have the fox move first, and all the pieces can move one space in any direction along, along any of these lines. Um, and that, that includes both the fox and the geese. Um, so let's go ahead and just play a little bit and see what happens here. So let's say the fox is going to go first, so fox is going to move there. Geese are going to move that way. Fox is going to move there, trying to anticipate jumping over and eating that goose. Um, but the geese don't want to allow that to happen, so they're going to move it in and block. So now the fox can't, can't move anywhere. Fox is going to move here, again trying to jump over right there. But again, geese are going to block. Fox is just going to hightail that out of there for the moment. Let's see, the geese are going to do that. Fox is going to move there. Ah, see, now the geese have made a mistake here. So the fox is going to go, ha ha, jump over that. Boom, got that one. Okay, so now it's the geese's turn. So you can see the, the, the rules are actually fairly simple. There's not a whole lot of um, uh, complexity to the rules. There's obviously a lot of strategy in this game, but um, not, not a very complicated game. So in this case, the fox has actually put himself in a, a, a quite good position because he can jump over each either one of these geese, so there's literally nothing that the geese could do to prevent at least one of their pieces from getting eaten. In this case, they're going to, let's see, move that piece there so the fox is going to go boom and jump over eat another one um, one thing I'm going to go ahead and show you um, since we've kind of already the, the I think you at this point you probably can see how the game is actually played a um, couple of things you want to keep in mind this game is like checkers in that you can jump over multiple pieces at once or you know in sequence so let's say we, this is the situation that we're, we're dealing with here um, let's do it that way actually. If, if this is the where we're at and it's the fox's turn, the fox can go one and jump over that piece there. Or if we had something like this, you could go one, two in, in a single move and eat both of those those geese right there. You can even do three or four if you, you know, or around a corner like let's say we're looking at, at something like this, like that. You can go one, two, three and then you've eaten all three of these pieces. So as many pieces as you as you can jump over in one round, you certainly can do that. Um, trapping the fox can be a little challenging sometimes because you you if you trap the fox in a situation, let's say this is what you're looking at, and let's say the, the, the geese just moved in there, they may, they may go, ha ha, I've surrounded the fox. No, you haven't because the fox can go bump and jump over and eat that piece and escape successfully. That's why in that scenario that I showed you earlier, it takes at least four right here because you're, you're keeping the fox from jumping over and eating this piece here because it can't because it'll land on that other goose. Most of the time, if you're looking at something like this, it actually takes uh, a fair amount of geese to, uh, to block the fox in. So like in, in this case here, because there's no diagonals for the fox to move on, um, you have to, in this case, use eight pieces to block in, in, in that very unfavorable situation. Right here, it would take you know, a lot more right there, something like that. <laughs> so now the, the fox is completely blocked in, but it, it literally took 12 pieces to block the fox in. Um, so you just gotta, you, the fox, in this game, I've found that the fox does have a slight advantage, at least with the way that we're playing it here today. Um, but it's, it's not overwhelmingly so. All right, so let's talk about some of the variations of this game that I've seen over the years. So the single biggest variation I've ever seen is uh, just simply the number of, varying the number of geese that we've got. Uh, in this case, we've got 13 and the board is made marked specifically for that, but I've seen versions where you'll have 15. So you put those two pieces are like that. Um, I've seen 17, put those two pieces like that. 
You can even have 19. I mean, you could you could almost literally have as many pieces as you like to, to the point where you think the game is a little bit more fair. Like I said, with 13 on one, I found it's a little bit tilted toward the fox, but as you add more geese, you end up making the game a little bit more fair towards towards the geese, make it a little more 50-50 even, basically. Um, I've actually seen a, a version of this game where you have two foxes instead of one. So you'll have one fox here and another one sitting right here next to it, over here on this, this piece here. Other than that, the game is played pretty much exactly the same way. Other than the fact you have to, like, capture, we had to block in both foxes. Um, I've seen a version, especially as you start increasing the number of geese, uh, the fox will actually have the option to start anywhere on the board that they like. So they want to start here, they could. If they want to start there, they could. It's however, you, however wherever they wanted to start in the game at. Uh, as far as movement goes, it's, it's fairly common for the game to be where if the fox can eat a goose, you know, jump over it, it has to jump over it and take it. So like you, you if, if this was a situation here, the fox would have to jump over and take it, even if it didn't want to, even if they thought it was strategically unwise, like maybe it's a, it's a trap and they're getting lured into it. The thought is that that is a hungry fox and it's not gonna be thinking strategically. It's gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna eat that goose and boom, jump over it like that. Um, that's, that's a fairly common variation whether you play with it that or not, it's completely up to you. Uh, I've seen some people play where you can't do the multi-jumping that I showed you earlier, kind of like checkers. Uh, that, that's, that's fairly uncommon. And I've also seen a version where the, the fox is allowed to move on any of these marked lines as they want, but the geese can only move on the horizontals and the verticals. They, they're, they're not allowed to move on the diagonals. Uh, the, the thought process behind that one is that the fox is extra clever, which is why you have these diagonals, and the geese aren't nearly as clever, so therefore they can only move up and down. I saw, I've seen a version of this game where what happens is the, the fox will actually start down here, and the board is set up like this, about like that, and rather than the fox trying to eat all the geese that they can until they, they're no longer able to be captured, their their job is to break past this wall of geese. Actually, the, the board is usually set up like this. Um, so the geese will start moving in, and the fox still jumps over like they want to, but their job effectively is to get past the the wall of geese. So, you know, back to this point here. Um, that, that one makes it a little bit more interesting, because basically you think of an army of geese just coming in to, to try and... Uh, you know, take over, take the fox out, but the, as long as the fox can escape, then the fox wins. There are other versions of this type of a game. This is called a, a hunt game. Um, there's a version of it called Hare and Hounds. Uh, there's a, a version from Russia that's actually played by children in the snow called Voli al Vostovi. Forgive me if I butchered that. My Russian is very poor. There's a version in Thailand called Len Chawa. Uh, there's one in South America called Hawk Attack, and and these games are were developed independently. They they, especially like the one developed in South America, there wasn't any uh, contact, at least as far as we know. Uh, so it was pretty neat that you see this similar, very similar types of games, were developed independently of the other ones. So that's it for today's look into fox and geese. If you look in the video description below, there's a link to a document with instructions on how to play, as well as a printable game board. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. Also, if you have suggestions for future video topics, I'd love to hear those as well. Be sure to stay subscribed for more videos looking at gaming history, as well as how you can make your own games and accessories. So until next time, I wish you luck and look forward to seeing you again at the Raven's Table.